Question five will be Mr. Burns to Dan Forrest. Mr. Forrest, the state's Opportunity Scholarship Program gives tax credits to pay for private schools, including schools with religious affiliations. To what extent should the state fund religious education of its children, and what role should religion play in public education? Uh, well, let me say this. Can you imagine, <coughs> excuse me, in this day and age, being a single mom who is trying to raise kids in a school district that is failing, perhaps one that has been failing decade after decade after decade. Opportunity scholarships are just that. They're about creating opportunity for the poorest students in North Carolina. Can you imagine saying no to that mom that wants the best for their kids, just like the President of the United States wants the best for his kids. I admire that he has the opportunity to send his kids to the best university or the best school, high school in the United States of America. But you know what? We should give the same opportunity for all parents. We should open up that opportunity. There is no reason to say that only government schools are the answer for, for parents. If there's no other choice for them. Why would we not give the poorest students, the poorest parents in the state of North Carolina an opportunity to take a, an opportunity scholarship, a voucher if you will, and give it to a private school that's going to give their child an excellent education. We should demand excellent education for all of our students. And quite frankly, we really shouldn't care where it comes from. We shouldn't care whether it's coming from traditional public schools or uh, public charter schools or private schools or homeschool or anything else. We should say, you know what, let the parent decide. The parents should have the choice for the education of their student. The government should not be the decider of that. So if you're giving an opportunity for a child to work their way out of poverty, then that's a great solution. Ms. Coleman. I believe that education really ought to be free. And I believe that people should be able to send their children to any school they want but I don't think it should be paid for with taxpayer dollars. We have a traditional public school, and if we would fund that traditional public school, we wouldn't have to worry so much about failing schools. Our school system has lost, public education has lost over $1 billion in the last four years. And you think that that doesn't impact it? We don't have the textbooks, we don't have the teacher assistants, the school resource offices, the nurses. So yes, we should absolutely fund public school systems. Some of our religious schools, and one in Mecklenburg County in particular, is allowed to discriminate because they don't allow the children who are LGBT or their parents to attend that school. So for taxpayers to fund discrimination is not something that we should be doing in North Carolina. It is wrong for North Carolina. These are not North Carolina values. Mr. Ford, rebuttal. Well, I think choice in education is a North Carolina value. It's something that parents demand, but especially parents of minority students absolutely demand it. They've seen themselves stuck in, their kids stuck in failing education systems, you know, and it has absolutely nothing to do with funding, especially on our part, since uh, we have put $2 billion more into K-12 education. I'll remind you again, elections are about choice, as my opponent said. At the previous administration, the very year we got elected in 2010, they cut education funding in K-12 by $1.25 billion. We put $2 billion back into K-12 education. We spend more on K-12 education now than we have ever spent in the state of North Carolina. That's a good track record. And related to textbooks, we spend, we've tripled textbook funding during this administration. We spend 13% more on education now than we ever have. That's an excellent track record. It doesn't mean we're done. We've no, we haven't claimed victory yet, but that's an excellent track record. Ms. Coleman, one minute for you. Hello. Yes. They will tell you that they are putting more money into education. As you can recall, the 2008 recession, everything got cut, especially government programs got cut, including education, because we were $4 billion in the hole in the state budget, and so everybody had to give up something to do that. But what he doesn't tell you is that they have not kept up with the cost of inflation in bringing back what the budget should be in this, in this day. Yes, choice is good, but again, it's not something we should have to pay for. It is not our choice to pay as taxpayer for the voucher programs for our students.